Hi everyone, and it's great to be part of Global Leadership Day, and I'm really proud to be talking to you a little bit about what that means for me and my classrooms. Uh, first of all, we need to thank our sponsors and supporters, because without them, um, sessions like this would not go ahead. And I think this is wonderful that we have this opportunity to be able to um, participate in webinars online for free because of these people. So we would I would love to know where you're from. So uh, can you just pick up a toolbar? Do you all know how to do a little star or a circle? I think you've all got permissions to do it. So I'll just show you quickly where I'm from. So I'm down here in South Eastern Australia, where it's quite a warm day. Hi Michael, welcome. But I'd love to know where you're from, so maybe you tell me if you can't. Oh, great. We've certainly got a global presence here. It would also be good to put in the chat exactly where you're from, so that you can share with each other um, where you're from and perhaps make connections beyond this point. Oh, Dana, great to have you from Romania. Um, what I wanted to talk about was leading the way in global classrooms because over the last 10, 12 years, I've been sort of working towards that with this amazing network that I've developed. So a little bit about me. I teach in a really small rural school in country South Eastern Australia. We have prep to year 12 students. So for me today is actually Wednesday, it's 8.32 in the morning. So I think some of you are still in my Tuesday. Um, I teach ICT or computers from year 7 to 12 this year. I also teach commerce subjects. Uh, and you can see some of the other things that I do on a global scale there. Before I actually get going, I would like to know, is there anything you would particularly like to know more about? And maybe we could tailor some of the conversations or some of this presentation toward that. So in the chat, I would love for you to tell me where you're from, what do you teach, and is there something more you would like to know about? And please interact because I'll try and answer questions or just watch the conversations in the chat. Learning is changing increasingly. So all the time it's becoming more interactive, we're conversational. You'll know our students are always on their mobile devices, texting, sending pictures, etc. Learning can be 24-7 now. It's global, which is what I love. We use a lot more multimedia than straight text. It's organic, it's networked, it's right now, and it's instant. So these sort of um, concepts of learning are leading to some exciting ways of leading. When we think of um, changing leadership, in the past we probably thought think about traditional authoritarian top-down type approach to leaders. So teachers in the classroom were almost dictated to about their curriculum, how they were to present it, how they were to go about it. But because of technology and its innovative use, it can now be organic at the grassroots. If you have an idea and I have an idea, we can certainly go out and lead the way with a small global project, a large one, complex, simple, etc. It's now collaborative and participatory. So the whole notion of leadership for me is changing completely. Why can teachers or educators or community members who wish to lead, lead? It's because of the power of networking that technology has brought about. We, can become, we are skilled and can become even more skilled in connecting, collaborating, communicating online. And we also have that wonderful ability to be able to make connections globally through some of the groups that you can see listed there. There's a question about Snapchat in um, the chat. That's probably one um, app that I haven't used at all with students. For a start, our school does not have what we call mobile phone service. So our students don't have Wi-Fi connections to their phones, although they do to their devices. And I think you can put an app down on that now. So at this stage, um, if others could add in there in the chat or grab the mic, 
would love to hear whether you've used it in education, but it's certainly a popular app with my students outside school. <laughs> uh, okay, if I do find anything, I'll let you know anyway. To be able to lead, all you need is an idea. Then that passion that must go with it to actually implement it, a network of other passionate or just interested parties, preferably on a global basis, but we can always start local. I think it's essential that we all have an online profile. So if you have a Twitter ID, we'd love you to share that in the chat now. I'll drop mine in there. Um, do you have a blog? It'd be great if you'd share your blog in there because that's a wonderful way to be able to share and celebrate what you're doing. Uh, the use of social media is, is really almost essential now in the classroom and perhaps in the staff room. If you're going to leave with a particular project, a hashtag is a really good idea now. And above all, I think you do need to be willing and able to take risks. So I'm going to look at a couple of teachers that have actually gone on and taken on leadership on a global scale with what would what normally be a very simple idea. So Global Read Aloud Day is now being held once a year. Uh, the time I forgot to look up, but I think it's towards the end of the year, but you can search that up later. So has anyone in this room actually participated in it? It was an idea by Pernil Rip, and she wanted students to be encouraged to read to read aloud to others in other countries. So she started this Global Read Aloud Day, but the leadership escalated and it's actually connected more than 500,000 students, six continents, since she started it in 2010. The spin-offs from this have actually um, led to New Zealand Read Aloud Day and the French version of this. So with a simple idea, we can lead the way. Another idea was Karen Stadler, who lives in South Africa, uh, in I think Cape Town or Durban. She went to a national park one day and took a photo of these rhinoceros drinking from the water. So she then read up and found they are really an endangered species, and I'm sure we've heard of that in the news. Hi, Maria. And she set up a wiki space or a web page. She invited other teachers and classes from around South Africa to participate, but then it became global. She would send a little um, toy rhinoceros to another classroom who was interested in being part of the project. They would research it further, etc. Some of them wrote letters of protest. Um, they were also horrified that the rhinoceros were perhaps a dying race. And then that little toy rhino would be handed on to the next class, eventually find its way back to Karen. Global projects can be simple or complex. So I would like to share a few simple and some of the complex projects that I get involved in. And I always think it's great. The global days are great days to think of an idea that you might be able to use with your network or with another teacher. So International Peace Day and International Dot Day are two such global days. We combine those two days, so my students were encouraged to draw dots. So if you have a look carefully at the small image, you'll see there are actually dots on each of these pictures that the students drew. But it was also supposed to signify something to do with peace. Yeah, global Minecraft would be really interesting. Uh, some teachers in America have set up a global games day where students are just encouraged to play games, not just computer games, but board games. Get out there in the playground and play, etc. Um, from that idea of International Peace Day, Lorraine Leo in America set up a Padlet, which is an online sticky wall. This is one of my favourite tools because only the teacher needs to register. A students just are given the link or other teachers in your uh, project and all they do is double click on the wall. They can add a photo or text or a little video, etc. And you, if you look carefully at some of the writing, you'll see that there were 
people from all over the world talking about what peace meant to them. And my students added their peace in a dot. Some global projects, though, can be quite complex. They may start simple, but they work their way up to an even more complex state. So Julie Lindsay um, organises the Flat Connections projects. They can be for all age groups. So they go from um, kindergarten students or preschool students right through uh, to the older students. Um, each of the projects are tailored at the age group. So my year 9 and 10 students who are 15 and 16 get involved in um, the Flat Connections project. So if you have a look, they've got themes. So they're divided up first of all into themes and then into topics. So some of the students are doing maker space and their impact on society and the global community. Other students might be doing uh, digital badges and looking at one of these other themes. But they don't work in their local group. They have to work with a group of students across the world. So one of my students will be in a group of three or four American students, a New Zealander or whatever um, countries are involved in the project at the time. They then need to they network and socialise on what's called a NING. Um, it's a bit like Facebook, so they get to learn to know each other, what it looks like where we live. They then research their topics together. They put their learning on a Google document and in the, the wiki that's set up for them. And eventually they create a little movie that summarises some aspect of what they've learnt. So that's about a 10 week project. At times it can be quite intense, but it's an amazing opportunity to make um, a global learning flat and also to lead the way in what can be done in global education. They can be simple ideas. So it was book week in Australia. Our students were encouraged to dress up as book characters. So now you can see the grade three, four students from our school. Um, they paraded to the web camera. There was a class from Taiwan on Skype video conferencing into us. They looked at the student in their costume, tried to work out what book it represented, and then the students um, discussed whether they'd read the book, what they liked about it, etc. I teach computer studies, so part of that learning at year 8 and 9 and 10 is to learn spreadsheets. So we were creating graphs in Microsoft Excel. And I thought sometimes just working with textbooks, etc., can be quite um, not very engaging or exciting. So I decided to go on Twitter and ask what the weather was around the world. And I got quite a few responses from people. So they talked about what the weather was like, what the temperature was, was it windy, hot, winter, summer, etc. My students then had to grab down, or I actually. Um, copied the tweets for them. They had to look at them. They then had to enter them into tables in Excel or into the different cells. Then they actually had to create um, charts from what they'd learnt. They also then put where those countries all came from on the Bing Maps app. But it could very easily be done with Google Maps as well. They certainly like working with real data, and it was a far more uh, engaged class that worked on that data than those who were just using standard printouts. Another tool that I've really come to like lately is Sway. Now, Sway is a Microsoft product, and if you have an Outlook account or a Hotmail account, you can readily register for free access to Sway. But my students worked out a way where they could use their other emails to be able to register. So um, if you would like to use Sway, try that because your ordinary email may work. What I would like to do is see if I can do um, share my screen with you and just show you what Sway looks like. Because it's very easy to use, it can be interactive, you can share with others and you can actually add comments back down on it. So if you just give me a minute.
One of my friends in Brazil, his students are learning English. And I had my class at the same time as he had his night class. So what we did was decide to link up in real time with each other. So the students in Brazil um, would talk about some of the things they'd been learning in English or they would ask my students questions in English. Then my students would respond back and tell them perhaps a better way of phrasing what they'd said, answer these questions, etc. Then we decided to do some interactive work on an offline project, so we weren't together in real time. Now I just need to see, can you see my screen? Could you please just quickly say yes, no in the chat? So you should see Food Australia Brazil. Okay, I'll just drop this down. So this is what the sway looks like. So we actually set up a series of sways. Um, oh, is that a question or is that a cheat? Let me just have a look. Okay, I'll go back. Um, so each week the students would be responsible for um, talking to one of the topics. So if we have a look here, we had likes and dislikes. So the students just looked at what they each liked and disliked. We went on to talk about our different typical foods and it was surprising how much we at times were similar but then at times we were quite different. Then we talked about the restaurants. So let me just see if I can grab this up quickly for you so you can see how the students interacted here. And again, my students love working with other students. We are really culturally, geographically isolated where we live. Um, so this is a chance for them to learn a lot about the world in real time and in an authentic way. So in uh, Brazil you can see Lucas said he likes guava and we don't really have guava here in Australia. You can see Sway allows animated pictures, um, they eat a lot of passion fruit, garama, etc. So we're learning about a lot of different foods that are not normal in Australia. And then as I go down we've got the jackfruit, you will see that my students, I hope they interact on this one, uh, yeah Job. So in Australia, these are the Australian students, a meat pie is our classic um, food etc etc. So all those students can be working on that document at once. They can set out pictures in different ways, they can animate them in. That's what our Aussie meat pie looks like and we've got an Australian dob of sauce there. So that's way which is free and hopefully, uh, let me just minimise this, I'll just pull back. Undo my app sharing. Hmm. It's a while since I've used Blackboard Collaborate. Okay, let's stop. Okay, so that's just a little bit about how you can interact with another class in real time. Um, you can also lead the way in the school itself. So I usually teach secondary students. So I would really love to bring across global learning um, into all areas of our school. So I got this message on the Google Plus group for the global classroom from a lady called Hanita Hen. She teaches in Israel, which for us is a fascinating country. We hear about it in the news, but not often in very positive terms. And she wanted to replace dolls with fur. By that I think she meant like, I would call it a stuffed animal or a little toy animal. So she'd send us one of their animals and it was actually a piece dove. And we sent her one of our native birds or cockatoos. So I took that idea to our grade three, four teacher and she was really keen to be involved. So the box arrived with their toy and I don't think you can see the dove in there. But it also came with a caterpillar and each segment of the caterpillar was their letter of the alphabet. They'd written to us in, um, is it Hebrew that the Israelis write in? So it looked completely different to us. Um, they sent little stickers, flags, all sorts of things. Our students then returned a box to them, hung up their flag behind them and a lot of interaction went back and forth because they shared what they were doing on a blog post. You can also lead the way in your school community and I think this is really important to keep your parents um, 
fully informed, etc., about what you're doing because parents want their students to be globally uh, educated, I find, anyway, the majority of them. So I was asked if I could share a photo of my students' lunch boxes. So it was recess time here at school, so the students went off, grabbed the lunch boxes, and we took a photo. We shared it with a teacher in Germany who was looking at healthy foods with his year seven science class. He then asked me exactly where I was from, and I said I'm from Hawksdale, and gave him the link to our school blog. He noticed that we have a school vegetable garden, because remember, we live in the country, and that we also provide fresh foods from the garden for our school canteen um, to be able to use to sell foods at lunchtime in different dishes. Uh, Ryan Hart from um, um, uh, Germany then asked me whether our canteen manager would be interested in talking with his canteen manager and sharing a menu and ideas so that they could do an Australian food day. So I asked our canteen manager, she said she would love to do a German food day in the canteen. So after school in Australia, early morning in Germany, the canteen manager from Germany a teacher from the school who was our interpreter. We don't speak German, she didn't speak English. And the Year 7 class who are learning English Skyped with us and we shared the foods that we tend to eat in Australia and they showed us things like the bread roll that they have at recess and lunchtime. So between the interpreters, we worked out a menu for both countries. We shared recipes via email. Those Year 7 students interpreted the recipes, so we couldn't use abbreviations, etc. And we then got the English version of the German recipes, and they got the German version of our Australian ones. So our canteen manager decided to do um, pork schnitzel, gravy rolls, German pasta, beef goulash. Sorry, you can hear our school day starting here right now, maybe with that announcement. It was so popular in our canteen that we sold out before 15 minutes had gone by. The German canteen sold, um, they made some of our dishes that we suggested. They decorated their canteen with Australiana and um, they also had a very, very successful Australian Food Day in the canteen. Another way that we can lead with our parents, at night time we, each year we have a Year 7 transition evening. So parents of students who might be interested in attending our school in Year 7 come into our school at night time, they're taken on a tour of the school, they see some of our subjects in action. So last year I was able to um, do a Skype link up with a class in Kenya. These students actually spoke very good English, but they also spoke Swahili. So they would bring an object to the screen, teach us the Swahili uh, language for that animal, and then we would be repeating it back. Not only did they do that, though, they took us on a virtual tour of outside. So these students or class was in a really rural area. Um, they actually had a school garden so they could grow food to feed their children lunch because otherwise these students don't get fed very well at home and they certainly don't bring lunch to school. Another way of leading, we've got lots of free tools at, in, you know, that are accessible to us. You've got Twitter chats, you've got webinars, you've got hangouts, you've got all sorts of opportunities. If you search, you'll find some that are free. So I, um, over the last eight years, have run a weekly webinar series called Tech Talk Tuesday. It tends to catch a global audience and that's another great way of trying to uh, either participate in a webinar or lead one yourself, of actually taking the conversations globally about learning. Another great day last year was Global Collaboration Day where teachers around the world could bring up their ideas, the tools they wanted to use, and offer them as projects for other teachers to get involved. So I created a Sway, um, and it was called Global Journeys to School, and I then put up on the Global Day website, tweeted it out, shared it wherever I could, 
and asked people if they could take photos or students could of their journey to school. What does it look like? So we got schools from Switzerland, uh, India, us from Australia, America, Switzerland. Some were students that took the photos, others were um, teachers that helped us out. So I'll just see how we go for time. I think I'm nearly out, so I'll keep moving. Another one that's a great project, now this is a fairly complicated one, but now we're leading in the global community. Another project that uh, Julie Lindsay, in partnership with Katie Grubby from Australia, um, is called Connect with China. Now China is a very difficult country to be able to interact with because so many tools are actually blocked. But we found that mobile apps, and I think this is a way that leadership will continue to go using mobile apps a lot more than just desktop apps, we use WeChat. So what we've been able to do is connect with students and teachers in China and look at certain topics and themes in mixed groups of students. So one of my girls was looking at rural versus urban as a topic and she was interested in what pets there are because she comes from a farm. So on, she only had one lesson to do this because she was about to finish her school year and she couldn't find a lot online. So on WeChat, I quickly put a message out on my WeChat group that included people from China, and almost immediately we straight away got answers back, and we also got photos immediately. So within that hour, she was actually able to use photos that she had the right to use and get information that she wanted to. Um, she got a photo of this little girl's pet, the snails, and you know, we forget that Chinese people live in small apartments. We in Australia have big, uh, on our farms, we have big land holdings, etc., etc. Um, these are some of the apps that I have used, and some of these you're probably familiar with. Different countries use different apps. So I think we need to be adaptable and see which ones the people we're working with are using. Um, I find time zones always catch and trip me up and I'm just always looking to see and make sure I've got the right times if we do synchronous link ups. But TimeBridge is great to arrange meetings. Lots of translation tools available now if the people you're interacting with don't speak English at all or well. And I like time and date, well time buddy to convert the times. Some of the tools that I really like to interact with in real time are Google Hangouts, although it's a bit bandwidth heavy for us at my school. Skype tends to work better. Uh, Zoom, there's Twitter, Blackboard Collaborate, Tweet Chats, Google Docs, etc. These are some of the challenges that I find though that we've got, I've got um, time zones, technology, the infrastructure, um, etc. So you can see them, just the common language. Most people that I've worked with have spoken English. But, you know, every now and then we get people who are really keen to collaborate and lead and they don't speak English. Important to celebrate our success. So share it out on Twitter, blogs, Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, whatever you use. If you want to start, I suggest always to start with someone else's global project. Get the feel for it. Go for the simple ones. Go for ones that are mentored. Attend many of the online free conferences like this. Join that Global Education Conference Network. There are people from all over the world there. Join the Twitter chats. You can moderate your own. You can moderate other chats. You can lead them. And the essentials is have that strong profile, your own online space, communicate, communicate, communicate. These are some of the hashtags um, that I've actually, that I follow on Twitter that have got a global focus at time. And if I go down, oh, I just find global days are great days to try and interact with others. That's where you can find me. And that link on the board, which I'll drop in here, has been set up with a lot of links to the resources that I very quickly led you through. So that link there uh, will take you to a link of resources. I will try and put that presentation up on that same link. And I think I have no minutes left to answer questions. Are there any quick, quick questions? 
not, please email me. We love to connect with lots of different people. Uh, do we have one? Yeah, Marilyn, uh, let me just give you the mic. Marilyn, you can use the microphone. If not, put your question in the chat and I'll try and answer it from there. Thank you everyone for coming. Maria, you are an amazing global educator too. I just showed you a sprinkling of ideas that I hope will help you see that we can all lead the way in global learning and I think it's essential that we do that. Yes, I am available to mentor schools in Australia. On that note, I'll stop the recording. I'll just stay here for a few more minutes. Um, thanks again to our sponsors, Lucy and Steve, thank you so much um, for providing opportunities like this. So thank you everyone.